are going to travel to Asia, specifically to the country of China, to learn about the Chinese giant salamander. Chinese giant salamander, the world's largest amphibian by Anne O. Squire. Super salamander. Giant Chinese salamander is the biggest salamander in the world. A Chinese giant salamander is actually about as long as a dolphin. They can be up to eight feet long and weigh up to 140 pounds. So as we've learned, all amphibians start their life in water. Many of them will live on land when they grow up. But the giant salamander actually spends most of its life in the water. These giant salamanders don't take an air through their mouths. They actually will take the air in through their skin. The giant Chinese salamander lives in the mountain streams in China, specifically in Southeast China. During the day, the salamander sleeps. But at night, it hunts for food. The giant salamander has a wrinkly body, but it's covered in this slippery coating that actually protects the salamander. When hunting, the giant salamander will stay between the rocks. And as you can see, it camouflages quite well within the rock. Then it waits for its prey to swim by. When the animal gets close, it gulps it down. The salamander actually uses its mouth like a vacuum to suck up the food. Slippery skin. The giant Chinese salamander's skin can be green, brown, or black, and many times it has spots of different colors. Very rarely, though, it can also be a pink to yellow color as well. Here you can see the spotted pattern on this giant Chinese salamander. He has these really small eyes near the top of its head, and you really can barely see. He doesn't even have any eyelids to close. Because the eyes are so small, the salamander does not use its eyes to see its food. In instead, it will actually smell the sense the food is nearby. Even though these amphibians are quite large, they actually don't make any sounds. Why? Because they don't have any vocal cords. Giant parents. salamanders will watch and guard those eggs. When the babies hatch, they're only one inch long, and then they're off on their own to try to survive. The female salamander will actually lay between 350 and 500 eggs at one time. This book also shares some other giant amphibians, a few that we've actually learned about. The hellbender is a salamander that lives in North America, and it can grow up to two feet long. We learned about the goliath frog from Africa. You can see that video on our playlist of reptiles and amphibians all around the world. We also learned about the cane toad, which is on our playlist as well. Animal record breakers, Chinese salamanders, the largest amphibian by Rachel Morlock. There are three kinds of giant salamanders, and none of them live in trees. There are three kinds of giant salamanders. One, two, three, A, B, C. The hellbender lives in North America. It can be two feet long. Japanese giant salamander lives in Japan. Japanese salamander can be five feet tall. That's even taller than me. The Chinese giant salamander only lives in China. They can grow up to six to eight feet. That's even taller than my ceiling. The Chinese salamander can be record-breaking size. <gasps> They're the biggest amphibian in the world. The male goes into a deep, dark cave. And there he builds a nest. The female enters the cave and lays about 500 eggs. The male guards the nest, moves around to put oxygen into the den. He eats the bad eggs. Cheers it and
rips it and eats it. <laughs> After about 60 days, the eggs will hatch. And the larvae look like little tiny adult salamanders, but they have gills. They're only about an inch long, but the larvae can't eat on their own yet. So they have a special sack of fat attached to their bodies that they eat for their food. After the eggs hatch, the parents are on their way. Toodaloo! After the first month, the larvae are ready to feed. They stay together in a group to hunt. The food they find will help them grow, grow, grow. They lose their gills when they're about nine inches. Unlike other amphibians, they don't go through a complete metamorphosis. Their bodies do grow, but their form doesn't change. An adult Chinese salamander pretty much lives on its own, and it spends most of its days in underwater shelters sleeping. They swim out to find food, and then they suck it in like a vacuum cleaner. You, it almost looks like he has a smile on his face. You can really see the four toes in the front, the five toes in the back. You can see that large tail made for swimming and even this special skin here. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. You ready? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. And I have my animal notebook. Mm-hmm, and hers is with the third grade curriculum with Rebecca. And I just have a blank white paper that I'm gonna draw with. So I'm going to start by drawing kind of like his head here and his back. So I'm going to kind of start drawing the side of his face here, kind of drawing the back, how his back is kind of turned a little bit. And then his tail actually kind of goes up a little bit. And Alexis noticed something. What does his tail kind of look like? The tadpole tail. It did. It reminds us of a tadpole tail. So it says it's nice and wide, made for swimming. And then we notice his um, body area kind of gets a little bit thinner. But then he has a very large head and kind of a rounded snout and a large head that kind of snakes back in. And in fact, we were watching a video that showed an island that actually has a river where the giant Chinese salamanders like to live. And the island was shaped like a salamander. And in fact, it had like the, the round head and everything like this. It was kind of cool. So now we're going to go ahead and do um, the back leg here. Now, salamanders have five toes in the back and four in the front. Now, his legs are quite stout and stubby, and even his little toes back here, they're pretty short and stubby. So there are his five little toes, and he just has some little webbing on his back toes. And then on the front here, he has only four toes. But again, they're short, they're pretty stubby, and they're not as webbed as the back toes are. And now this picture actually shows both sides. It shows this one just kind of peeking out just a little bit. So just get those four in. And in fact, I'm going to make that one a little bit wider there because they are stubby little toes. Now they will walk on the land for just short amounts of time and they do have lungs they can breathe with but they actually mostly breathe through this wavy flap of skin on the side of their body and like a lot of amphibians do breathe through their skin a little bit because this salamander lives spends most of its time in water it does need a little bit of an extra resource on how it can breathe underneath the water. Another interesting feature on the chi Chinese giant salamander is the little tiny beady eyes. They have these little tiny beady eyes and in fact really cannot see well at all. And in fact they actually have bumps all over their skin and that's kind of what helps them sense things around them. And they do have just um, two very small little nostril holes. 
And again, that cute little smile, huh? On the edge here. Here is our basic outline for the Chinese giant salamander. Now I think we're ready to color, aren't we? So I just wanted to share a few different color variations of the giant Chinese salamander. So this one, as you can see, is a little bit darker. It has almost black stripes and black spots on it. Whereas this one here is a little bit of a lighter gray coloring. Look how it blends in with the rocks. And in fact, most of their coloring really looks like rocks because they live on the rocks and rivers. Here's another really pretty coloring. It's got a little bit of pink and orange and black spots. This really reminds me of granite. Of course, my favorite, the one I'm gonna color. This one's a very rare coloring, but very rarely they can be pink or yellow. You can see how it kind of blends together to make this pretty peachy color. And you can kind of see these little bumps all over their skin. Those are the bumps actually that they help them sense things. They also have a um, poison that kind of can ooze from that that also protects them. So let's get to coloring. Here you can see I have a variety of pinks and oranges and pinks and yellows and peaches that I'm going to use. Alexis is going to go more for the rock colored giant salamander here with her grays and her browns. For some reason, I don't really like to do the rare kinds. I like to do the common kinds. Yeah, and you know, that's okay. Sometimes I like to do it that way too. And that's, well, that's the fun thing about it is you can choose the way that you want to color. And in fact, each one is unique. God mm -hmm. made them all unique, so none of them have the same exact coloring. The one that I saw in the book, the picture of it, I kind of have that picture in my mind, and I'm kind of copying of what it looks like in my head. Okay. It had like these brownish, grayish um, feet, and then it was like brown and like gray on its skin and stuff. Mm, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that light gray one too, or the one that looks like the granite. That's a pretty cool coloring too. So I decided I'm gonna go for the rare, the rare salamander. I knew you probably would. Plus it's pink, right? <laughs> Chinese giant salamander all pink. I'm actually just going to use this pretty peachy color to make the little bumps on its skin, but instead of drawing a bunch of little tiny individual circles, I'm actually just going to pretty much scribble in a sense. But it gives a really cool texture that looks very similar to what their skin would really look like.
Don't they? So they, the, baby, the parents do guard the eggs. At night, they swim out of their cell blocks 